مع الاستاذ بوز من وزاره الصحه الان راح يتقدم ذا بوديوم از يورز بليز Good morning, everybody. Uh, my topic for today is e-learning solution, assistive technology for special needs in occupational therapy. Here, I'll be talking about like a, the role of OT, occupational therapy, to facilitate learning for children with special needs using like adaptive equipment or technology, whatever is needed for the patient. So, I'd like to start my presentation with a note by the quote by John F. Kennedy. Not every child has an equal talent or an ability or equal motivation, but children have the equal right to develop their talent and their ability. We'll see like what is e-learning. E-learning comprises of all forms of electronically supported learning and teaching. So e-learning is essentially the computer and network enabled transfer of skills and knowledge. E-learning applications and processes include web-based learning, uh, computer-based learning, virtual education opportunities, and digital collaboration. Content is delivered via the internet, intranet, extranet, audio, or videotape, satellite TV, CD-ROM. It can be self-paced or instructor-led, and it includes media in the form of text, image, animation, streaming video, and audio. The role of occupational therapists, like occupational therapists are expert in using technology to increase, maintain, or improve functional abilities in individuals with special needs, depending on the need of the patient, whether they have to improve the skills or to maintain it. It, it depends on how, what the diagnosis of the patient is. Like students with disabilities sometimes require technology that is helpful in e-learning and participation. So what we'll see, like, what is assistive technology? Assistive technology is an important tool since the origins of the occupational therapy profession to improve function and participation. We can define like assistive technology as any item, piece of equipment or product system, whether acquired commercially, off the shelf, modified or customized, that is used to increase, maintain or improve functional capabilities of individuals with disabilities. We can grossly divide the assistive technology into uh, high, low technology devices and high technology devices. The low technology devices are the traditional adaptive equipment, reachers, button hook, pencil grip, pointers, etc. And the high technology with the recent, a wide range of electronic devices ranging from simple switches to complex robotics have been used as a result of rapid technological advances in society, specifically with the introduction of the microprocessor chip. Uh, examples of uh, high technology devices are AAC, which is the augmentative or alternative communication devices, environmental control system, etc. Who do we assist? We can help patients with cerebral palsy, spinal cord injury, traumatic brain injury, learning disability, autism, degenerative disorders, or any, any client who needs some help from us. And categories of assistive technology, we can have like uh, computer access, augmentative alternative communication, activities of daily living, environmental control, seating mobility and positioning. Uh, all the rehabilitation process is a teamwork and our team here consists of physician rehabilitation nurses, uh, rehabilitation engineer, occupational, physical and speech therapist, uh, family, teacher, special educator and social worker. The assessment process here, like, it's very important, like, what occupational performance area of the person is affected. We have to find out what areas of the patient are affected. Like, it can be play, it can be leisure, it can be education, it can be activities of daily living, like eating, uh, grooming, or anything. So we have to see what exactly is affected. And what are the individual's immediate long-term goal? We have to know, like, individual's long-term goal and the short-term goals. How would the use of devices help to achieve those goals? And how good the family support is. The steps in the assessment process is, like the first one, it's more of a client-centered approach. So we have to find what is the client and the family need. 
Then we had to analyze the client. We had to do an assessment and see what his assets and weaknesses are. Then we had to see like which what matching devices will help him into achieve those goals. Then we had to try the equipment on him. Equipment we had to try on him. Then we had to train him on that particular equipment and we had to give the final recommendation. The final recommendation can be some adaptations or modification or some softwares what the child, the person needs. The assessment of client skills, like we have to see, we have to see the child, the person as a whole. Like it's not only the physical area, it's a, uh, we have to see the physical aspect, we have to see the cognitive aspect, we have to see the psychological aspect, we have to see the sensory aspect. Then only we will be able to deal with the patient. I will be able to get a good goal, like good outcome. Uh, the motor abilities, we have to see the postural control, the head and the trunk control, the body side selection, which side is dominant, which side he can do better the range of motion, accuracy, speed, and the reaction time of the patient, the endurance, how long he can work on it. Then the other aspect is the sensory status. Here we have to look at the auditory, visual, tactile, senses, etc., and the cognition and the communication. The next one is the cognition and the communication. How we are here we have to see his memory, his uh, immediate short-term and the long-term memory. We have to see the orientation, whether he's oriented to time, place, or person his attention span, his sequencing abilities, his abilities to follow instruction. And psychological factor is very important. We have to see whether he's motivated to do it. If he's not motivated, we cannot just push him into something. So we have to see his motivation. We have to know his interest, his habits, and his family support and socioeconomic status. The OT intervention, we can have it in two stages. Like uh, we have to do the basic skill training and the uh, training the skill for the device. What are the basic skills which we need? Like, if suppose, like, if, if you are taking any, like, if you are taking the uh, computer, we have, what are the skills you need? We need vision. We need some attention span. You need some concentration. You need some hand function. You need some head control to look at the thing. So we have to see, like, we have to, if we have to make the child operate the computer, we have to work on all this area so that we will be able to achieve the goal. And the training, the skills for the device. For the particular device, we have to do an activity analysis and see. What are the skills the, child, the patient has it and what are the skills the child patient needs to operate that particular device. Then we have to work on those particular skills which is needed for the device. That is the second stage of the treatment. Like this can be together also. The types of assistive devices, uh, the switches and controls. There are lots of assistive devices. I'm just mentioning a few of them. The switches and control, it's the interface between the person and the device sending signal from the user to the connected device. Then we have the alternate type of keyboards, like uh, enlarged keyboards, if the patient is having problem with vision or some hand function problem, on-screen keyboards, reduced keyboards, customizable overlay keyboards, which is the indelic keys, ergonomically designed keyboards. The mouse and other pointing devices, we have like trackball, upside down mouse, uh, touch screen, head pointer, joystick. This, all these things are used according to the need of the patient that we'll get it from the assessment. And then the positioning device is also very important because if, if he's in a good position, uh, if he's uh, sitting in a good position, he can maintain his hand, like, you know, he can have a better hand function and a better tongue control. Uh, some of the assistive software programs which we can use it in uh, OTA is like word prediction. Here it will help to reduce the number of keystrokes by predicting what will be the, what will be selected next. Read it provides many animated stories, fully narrated and beautifully animated. Indeli tools such as like Indeli Talk, Indeli Mathematics, etc. to facilitate reading, writing and mathematics for students. Uh, the criteria for selecting the software, it should be easy to use and should have the levels of degree, degree difficulty, should be gradable, should be from simple to complex, and should be of high child interest. The child should have some interest on that particular thing. It, it can be like gender related also. Then appropriate response should be there for the program. The categories of software use, it can be exploratory. The program should allow the persons to play and explore different areas and should have the ability to like drill and practice opportunities for guided practice, constructive, allow to create new objects, designs, layout, word processing, develop writing and language skills, communicative opportunities to develop communication skills. 
Now we'll, like I went through a lot of uh, articles related to assistive technology and occupational therapy. So there's not much of uh, good studies has been done on this field. So there are lack of studies involving all three PO, which is the person, environment, occupation components, indicating a lack of research in occupational performance issue. Further research on occupational performance is important for developing occupational therapy practice in the area of assistive technology and physical environment issue. Furthermore, study designs reflecting the societal level in all three PEO, which is a person, environment, occupation, components are required. Finally, there's a strong need for conceptual and theoretical development. So there are like people, like I went through some other studies also, some of the literature review, which says that people are aware of it about the uh, assistive technology which they can use it, but they are not sure like which one to use it and how they can use it for that particular problem. And finally, like I would like to end, end with a quote by Helen Keller, when we do the best that we can, we never know what miracle is wrought in our life or in the life of another. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pose, for this fruitful presentation, yet very useful. Uh.